Okay, so we threw this single piece cut or little bowl or planter with saucer attached. We put a hole in it already during the throwing process and now it's time to trim this base and I'm going to go for a look like this. Okay, so none of this gets trimmed because, well, you have to have thrown it well so it doesn't need to get trimmed because you really can't get in there and trim it very well and you're not going to trim the inside of the hole to contend with. So I'm just going to trim a foot into this and I need a little water to get this to stick down. Mush it around, create a little bit of a paste so that when I tap it to center, now it's stuck on there. And then I have been intending to um, compress this again. I did not make them very thick. Um, I just wanted to sort of keep everything nice and thin. So I compress that a little bit. That's not trimmed, it's just an extra bit of compression. And then I'm going to trim the outside here and create a foot. So you can see all the bracing I'm doing with this tool. Trying to make a fairly, you know, distinct foot because I like that. And I'm going to bevel it just for smoothness. I think I like the idea that one can, when they try to pick this up, they can get their fingers under there a little better. I don't want it hovering too low to the ground. Oh, bevel that again. Lost control of my tool there. All right, and then I'm going to trim this part. So I haven't touched this foot. Now I'm going to trim right, I'm going to make my mark. And then I'm going to trim towards the center. And again, you can see all the bracing that's going on, keeping control of that sharp tool. And I tend to dig a little deeper here because I know it's usually, based on the inside, it's a little, um, the inside usually goes like, that so that'll be a little thicker and then I ease up on the center part because they tend to be a little thinner right in the where you drill the hole in the, in the throwing process and I'm going to bevel that as well and then I'm going to check that I have a nice air gap here which it can go a little further and it doesn't feel like it's that thick. I could also just get a little nudge if it's pliable. I kind of like that. I prefer that. Now there's a nice air gap. A couple little grizzlies there, so I'm going to remove those. And I'm going to smooth everything out. So this is a little, this is a little dry. So I'm going to use the back of my fingernail to smooth it, or you can use this part of the, the rounded part of this tool to burnish it. Burnishing is nice. Okay, and then because it's a planter, I'm going to give it a little air flow. So I'm going to take this tool. And I'm going to cut through the foot in two spots. Let's see. What can you see? Trying not to dig down, but I definitely want to cut right through the foot. I would like this to be a little visible on the outside if we're not invisible. It's got a nice little shape of a cutout right across from each other. I'm smoothing those, smooth that a little bit, and then I sign it. And then I pop it off 
here by bending that, breaking that seal. There's usually a little something that you should smooth here. You can do it just with your finger. You could do it with a sponge, but this is stonework, so that'd raise some grit, and then you'd have to go around with your finger afterwards. Let's do that just for fun. Nothing really that I need to smooth. So suddenly, very gritty. So now I'm gonna run my finger around that. And that forces that grit back down into the softer, finer clay. All right, there's our foot. There's our two notches out of the foot. A little junk right there. And there's our hole. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, so those are the little planters. And you see I didn't trim anything on the planter itself part, just on the base of the saucer. Okay, thanks for watching.